Oh, yes, yes. They have the audacity to go after anything. The Seven. Dragons. Gods. No ancient artifact that relates can escape their greedy ambitions. Still, this time is different. Who do they think they are going after the Abyss Order's treasures? Oh, Traveler, it's you. Huh? Ganyu, what are you doing here with Lan? Do you have a commission you need to post? Hello. We were just discussing the treasure hoarders. Yes. We were just saying how even the audacious treasure hoarders should know better than to mess with the Abyss. It's just too evil. But we recently received intel from the Ministry of Civil Affairs that two big-time treasure hoarders in Liyue and Mondstadt are planning some big joint operation. Two big-time treasure hoarders? Yes. They're known as Big Sis of the South and Raptor of the North. Oh, Raptor! Paimon remembers he tried to run away from Amber and Mondstadt. But who is Big Sis of the South? You already know something, then. I guess you must have crossed paths with the treasure hoarders many times before. You are correct. She's the head of the treasure hoarders in Liyue. As I understand it, the treasure hoarders all call her boss. Some say that the god of thieves even bestowed a gift upon her for her exploits, making her big sis of the gods. But that's probably just a wild rumor. Anyway, the treasure hoarders discovered some previously unexplored ruins that the Abyss Order has been secretly guarding in the shadows. Despite how dangerous that makes it, all the treasure hoarders can think about is what kinds of treasure could be inside. They have already devised a plan. They will send out a decoy to divert the Abyss Order's forces away from the ruins, then send an expert thief inside to steal the treasure. To this end, Big Sis and Raptor have reportedly recruited a certain Grand Thief from Fontaine. Grand Thief? That's quite an impressive sounding title. Oh, indeed. He is an extraordinary individual. The Grand Thief is highly respected in the Treasure Hoarders, in the same way that we adventurers look up to great adventurers. Ah, so you're familiar with the author of the Tavat Travel Guide, then. Correct. The Grand Thief is someone as renowned as her. So, despite being relative big-timers in Lyra and Mondstadt, Big Sis and Raptor had to put in a lot of work to convince a thief of his status to come and personally oversee this operation. With the major changes in Liyue recently, the Ministry of Civil Affairs and the Millilith already have their hands full. They don't have any time to investigate rumors about treasure hoarder activity. But anything related to the Abyss makes me feel like there is some unknown danger lurking beneath the surface. So I decided to come to the Adventurer's Guild to post a commission. Mm -hmm. Leave this commission to us! Oh! Thank you so much. Good to see this in the hands of a reliable guild member. Well then, good luck. The guild will take care of the details of this commission. There's still a long road ahead. Come and see these rare and precious curios.
Come into being. Time for some training? Signs of treasure order activity here. They must have come to these ruins. Let's go deeper inside. Paimon sure hopes Ganyu's information is reliable. There aren't many guards here. Looks like their plan to draw away the Abyss Order's forces really worked. should be the right direction, but why does it feel stranger and stranger as we make it deeper into these ruins? <laughs> um, be careful now! Paimon's right behind you! Thank you. 
This looks like a person. Could it be the Grand Thief? Why is he in that position? Is he praying to something? <gasps> That's... Why is the Statue of the Seven hanging upside down? And the statue's hands... Paimon remembers they're normally holding an orb, right? But this statue is holding... What is that? Uh... Paimon has a really bad feeling about this. And the Grand Thief hasn't moved an inch. Do... Do you think he's... Um... Hello? Are you okay, mister? He... He's dead! Paimon doesn't feel so good! Uh, let's get out of here, and fast! We should report back to Ganyu and Lan!
spy on the secrets of the Abyss. You have come here. You have seen our secrets. For this, you must pay the price. As a herald, I will mete out your punishment. An abyss herald? Dane. Danesliff. Oh, I thought you were just a couple of pests that stumbled in here by mistake. So, you are with Danesliff, that constant annoyance in our affairs. Did he send you here to die? His resistance against the Abyss has gone nowhere for a long time. There is nothing you can do to change the tide. The Abyss is unstoppable! What is this power? Pirates never seen it before! Careful! Please don't get cocky! And merciful. <sighs> this power, it seems familiar. <sighs> I see. So it's you. You are the one. In that case, I shall stay here no longer. <sighs> what a tough battle! Are you okay? Oh, such a strong enemy! Who knew the Abyss Order had monsters this powerful among them? Huh? What is it? What are you thinking about? Oh, right, yeah! We're near the exit now. Let's get out of this scary place before something even more dangerous shows up. So, we meet again. A little sooner than I had expected. Hey, it's Dane! Judging by your expression, it seems you just experienced something quite strange. Could it be that you encountered an Abyss Herald in those ruins? Huh? How did you know that? I've been on the Abyss Herald's trail. I didn't expect to find you here as well. An inverted statue of the Seven, holding abyssal power in its hands. No, I have never seen such a thing during my time fighting the Abyss. Though I have had my suspicions. Tell me the rest of what happened in there. So you escaped the ruined depths filled with abyssal power, and then? And then, as we got close to the exit, an Abyss Herald suddenly appeared and blocked our way! We fought a big battle with that thing. Maybe it hasn't gotten too far yet. Yes, this is a rare opportunity indeed. Come, let's catch up to it. Let's go! 
Oh, a rare opportunity? With Dane helping out, maybe we'll be able to solve more mysteries about the Abyss! One with my blade. From whence you came. Fourth, my blade. with my blade. Just digging through these abandoned ruin guards looking for something of value. Oh, is that so? The traveler here seems to like doing that a lot, too. Looking for chaos devices, chaos circuits, you know, that kind of stuff. I was nearby investigating precisely because abyss mages often come out from that ruin to explore. They seem to be searching the remains of ruin guards for a certain valuable object to take back to the ruins. However, they look disappointed, so it would seem they haven't found it yet. Well then, why didn't you grab one of them just now and ask what they were up to? I certainly don't mean to be merciful towards these monsters of the abyss. But I have a feeling that their plan with this object is of major importance to the entire Abyss Order. One cannot discover the truth behind it through interrogation. Or rather, these Abyss Mages likely fear something else much more than they do a painful interrogation. Uh, Paimon is getting goosebumps thinking about all of this. Alright, we shouldn't waste too much time here. Let's continue our search.
Order guide you. A touch of frost. From whence you came. I'll protect us. Fourth, my blade. Submit for judgment. One with my blade. Submit for judgment. Fourth, my blade. Stabilize. One with my blade. Wow! Besides the Abyss Order, Ruin Guards sure are active around here. Hmm, seems wherever we find an Abyss Mage hideout, there's often a bunch of Ruin Guards roaming around too. Is that just a coincidence? Or... There are no coincidences in the world. Everything is the fruit of seeds planted long ago. Just like your appearance in that tavern, time is just waiting for those seeds to sprout. Forget it. Just some needless musings. The connection between the Abyss Order and the Ruin Guards is by no means incidental. Rather, they are both branches that have grown out and up from the same roots below. Branches? Roots? What do you mean exactly? Both originate from an ancient nation that was destroyed 500 years ago. Kanria. Huh? Kanria? Really? The Abyss Order and Ruin Guards are left over from after the destruction of that nation? Oh. Speaking of Conria, that's really a super ancient name! Oh, right. As your guide, Paimon should explain a bit here. A long time ago, the nation of Conria was... Huh? You have memories of being there. But that nation was destroyed 500 years ago! Hmm... Is that so? Well... Everyone has their secrets. You did not pry into mine, so I shall not pry into yours. But, if you would like to tell me, I will listen. So, the Kanria you saw, what was it like? So that's the complete story, huh? Paimon thought that you ran into that unknown god first. I see. So your first memory after coming to this world was being awoke from within that meteorite. It seems your brother woke up first. But the question is, how long before you? And then your brother told you that the destruction of Kanria plunged the whole world into chaos, and that you two should leave this world called Tevat? The destruction of Kanria? He said that? That destruction you witnessed, that's... history from 500 years ago. It seems the first time you awoke in this world was indeed during that period. Huh. So your brother must have understood this world better than you did, because he woke up first! 
And it was shortly after that that you encountered an unknown god who blocked your path, so you couldn't escape. Oh, Paimon knows this part really well. I understand. When you awoke at that time and hurriedly tried to leave for another world, you didn't know anything about Kanria. But now, since you have come to gain some understanding of Tavat, you are able to guess that the war you witnessed all those years ago must be the war that ended Kanria. Am I right? Ah, if that's the case, you must have been flipping through all sorts of books during our adventure these past few months. Before going to Mondstadt, you had just looked at some vague materials. Later, we managed to gather a whole bunch of old books from all around Mondstadt and Liyue, but you told Paimon they were useless. So, the whole time you were just trying to learn more about Conria so you could find your brother? Oh, yeah! You can travel around the Seven Nations to find the Seven, but where can you go to find a nation that was destroyed 500 years ago? I probably know more about Kanria than both of you. Kanria was a nation without a god. Not because it had a god that died or abandoned them, but because it never had a god to begin with. It was a powerful nation, built purely by humans. An unprecedented flourishing and glorious civilization. It was the pride of humankind. A nation without a god? Later events unfolded just as you remember. It was all destroyed by gods. You mean that... Five hundred years ago, the gods descended upon the world and brought desolation to Kanya. The pride of humankind was uprooted and crushed, like a weed removed from the garden of the gods. How could that be? The history books don't say anything about that! Yes, well, continuing to discuss the past now will only dampen our spirits. Let's keep moving. I will tell you more of what you want to know as we continue our search. It's more ruin guards and abyss mages. Dane was just saying how these ancient machines are from Conria. Hmm. So, did Conria have a lot of ruins that needed to be guarded? No. Ruin guard is the name modern people have given these machines. No one called them that 500 years ago. These ruin guards were known as field tillers by the people of Conria. Field Tillers? What a strange name. Hmm. 
It's not like you think. Field Tiller was just a code name. The people of Conria like to give code names to their weapons. The land is not to be tilled with farming tools, but rather is to be fought for with steel and blood. This is how the Field Tiller came about. Fought for with steel and blood? Well, that's an interesting way of understanding tilling. Paimon doesn't think it's a very positive interpretation. <laughs> After the destruction of Kanria, these masterless field tillers went completely out of control. They wandered aimlessly over the centuries, gradually spreading to every corner of Tevat, perhaps resonating with the sorrow of other civilizations lost to time. They found their way to various ruins across the land, where they lie dormant. That sounds... so sad. Once you understand more, those details won't mean much to you. But no matter their past, all that remains of them now is the danger they pose. So destroy them all. Order guide you! Solidify! I'll protect us! Oh. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Fourth, my blade. Spirit blade. Attack! Submit for judgment. Stabilize. Swift and merciful. Solidify. Swift and merciful. This talisman seems connected to the Abyss Herald, but why would an Abyss Mage be carrying it? Perhaps it really does contain information about their operation. But... Paimon can't read the writing on it. Oh, is that the script of Conria? Engulf the faith of the enemy in flame, and bring glory to His Highness the Prince. What? Is that what it says? Loom of Fate, initial operation. They, the Abyss, seem to be carrying out a large operation. The key word here is Loom of Fate. It seems like they are still launching the operation, or rather, are still conducting preliminary tests. Loom of Fate? What's that? Is it literally a fate-leaving machine? From the horrible feeling Paimon's been getting, those eerie ruins are super likely to be related to this fate-leaving operation. So, Dane, what message does this talisman contain? I'm reading it now. Hmm. An ambitious operation. But some parts are difficult to understand. How so? In short, 
The first phase of the plan is related to Osail, Overlord of the Vortex. The Overlord of the Vortex? You mean that god in the ocean? What do they want with Osail? Uh... I know of your past heroics regarding Dvalin. And I also know of the Abyss Order's role in the Storm Terror incident. Though you may not have been aware of it at the time, you were thwarting an Abyss Order operation similar to this one. Last time it was Venti's old friend! This time it's a huge ancient god! The Abyss Order keeps setting their sights higher and higher! Will the Abyss Order use their lies and dark magic to corrupt Osile, just as they did Dvalin? No. From the contents of the Talisman, this operation goes one step further. They won't just corrupt Osile's mind. They also plan to use the ancient technology behind the Field Tillers to completely transform Osile's body. Is... that even possible? So wait, the Abyss Order wants to make some sort of cybernetic squid god of mass destruction? Very few people today truly understand the civilization of Kanria. Though, of course, the accuracy of that understanding itself is difficult to judge. Only the Abyss Order has consistently sought out the remnants of Kanria. Despite being far from human, they seek out this lost human civilization quite persistently. The talisman's message states that they will use the defiled statue as a base, attaching Osile's limbs to construct a mechanized god. And the new core that shall replace the orb usually held by the statue of the Seven is the eye of the very first field tiller. The eye of the very first field tiller? <sighs> Oh, Paimon gets it! All those Abyss Mages are looking for the special eye, right? It would seem so. This whole thing keeps getting more complicated. But basically, it all has to do with that eerie statue of the Seven we saw, right? Yes. According to the Talisman, the eye should be placed in the hands of the defiled statue thereby imbuing the newly born god with the power to topple the divine thrones of Celestia. Oh boy, the Abyss Order sure isn't holding back with this plan. Hmm. Since no one knows where the first field tiller is, how about we take the information about the statue as the starting point for our investigation? Yeah! That tone-deaf bard is too difficult to track down anyway. Let's go to the cathedral first and ask around. Maybe we'll learn something. The cathedral? Hmm. Huh? What's the matter, Dane? Nothing. Let's get moving. A huge statue, a grandiose cathedral. The people of Mondstadt clearly spent a great deal of resources and energy to construct them. But how aware of this was the animal Archon on receiving this gift? And how much did he give back in return? Faith doesn't ask for anything in return though, does it? <laughs> as long as the gods have a clear conscience about it all, there's nothing I can say about it. Don't say anything bad about the animal Archon. And actually...
Actually, the animal archon is... Ugh, never mind. <laughs> I never specifically said I would enter the cathedral. I'll leave you two to mingle with the sisters. Huh? You are the honorary knight of Mondstadt. They will surely allow you to poke into these affairs with their utmost trust. Having me tag along would only make them suspicious. Correct. And just as our little friend said, I might say something bad about the church at any time. When a non-believer steps onto holy ground, the result is never pretty. I have never received the favor of the gods in the past. I don't see any reason I would need it now, or in the future either. That's enough about that. While we've been chit-chatting, the Abyss Order continues to act. Okay, then we'll just go in ourselves and ask around. I should warn you about one thing. Don't go mentioning the defiled statue inside the cathedral. The Church of Favonius wouldn't ignore the matter of the statue. But if they rashly tried anything against the Abyss Order, it would only ruin whatever element of surprise we may have. Also, meddling in the affairs of the Abyss usually doesn't end well for anyone. Go into the cathedral and ask around. I'll be waiting out here. Go into the cathedral. 